And then for text, I'm going to say flat terrain. And tooltip, create flat terrain. So now we should have a button that's created, and that's it. <laughs> so if we were to, so let's update this plugin and test it again. So again, you have to right click on your plugin, uh, click publish as plugin, wait forever, and then override the plugin you created. Whoops, yeah, okay. Click okay, and then go to tools, manage plugins and then find your plugin that you installed I'm gonna update that anyway um, and then you should see new version available update so all you have to do is click update and then it should automatically update and you got a little message down here saying finished installing plugin um, so again I'm going to restart studio and then when I go to my place I should see a uh, uh, plugin button that says flat terrain and there we go if you see up here we get a little button that says flat terrain so if we click that nothing's gonna happen because we haven't programmed anything in for it to happen um, so let's make it do something so let's go back to our documentation on these buttons so on our toolbar, we see create button, creates a button toolbar. Um, I, I don't know where to find the documentation for that button. It might just be called button, um, but the tutorial shows you anyway. So the button has an event called click. So we can see this from the tutorial wiki page. Um, so if we do button.click, we can connect a function to it. So we can create a function listener to this click method. So anytime button is clicked it will call the function we give it so let's do that let's create a function called button clicked and that's the bottom of our script we'll say button dot click connect to button clicked so anytime the click uh, event is fired it's gonna call our button clicked function Cool. So from this plugin, all we want to do is create flat terrain. That's all we want to do. So to create flat terrain, um, we need to understand how terrain works. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do next. So let's search for terrain. So here's our terrain object here. Um, it's got lots of things, lots of fun things. So if we go down to functions, um, we'll see the method, where is it? Set cells, I believe. Yes, set cells. So set cells uh, wants a series of parameters and wants an x, y, z coordinate. Oh, that's the wrong one. Set cells and wants a region three int 16 that's really confusing but it's essentially just a region 3 <laughs> it wants cell material a cell block and cell orientation so I'm just gonna copy that so we know what to use and I'm just gonna make a note of it right here So let's create another function called create flat terrain. Now in this function, uh, what we want to do is do all the the work that needs to be done. So let's, let's do game dot workspace dot terrain, and then uh, we want the method set cells. So we can see from here, we need uh, a region three int 16 object. So let's just start that. And we want cell material. Um, so if you're wondering what materials there are, you can always go to help object browser 
and go to the bottom, you'll see all these enum objects. Um, so you have cell material, there's all of these, there's cell block, and there's cell orientation. Um, for these, you can just write them as string values and it'll work just the same. So that's what I'm gonna do. So cell material, let's just do grass. For cell block, we'll do solid. And for cell orientation, we'll do X. So this is just your standard block object terrain. So for region three and 16, this works the same way as region three does, except it uses vector three into 16s. <laughs> I don't understand exactly why they're doing it that way. I'm sure it has to do with how terrain works. I don't know. Um, so a region three will take two vector threes. So let's do that. Whoops. Um, and then we need to give a minimum value and a maximum value. So I'm going to say negative 127, 0, negative 127, 128, 1, 128. So if you don't know how region 3s work, um, think of a region 3 as a cube um, or uh, some sort of cuboid rectangle 3D object, right? So um, here, we'll get a, a Wikipedia. Nope, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> I want the uh, I want the wiki page on it. This is great. Okay, so look at this picture right here. So we we this whole cube. Imagine it as our region three, and each of these points. Think of them as our vectors. So where my mouse is, this is our first vector, and where this mouse is, this is our second vector. So you see that the first vector describes the lowest values, the lowest corner values of our cube, or some sort of 3D object here. Um, and then our second vector gives us the highest values. And you can think of this as like stretching the cube out, and you're giving it the lowest and highest values where you're stretching it from. Um, that's essentially what a, a region three is, and that defines this cubed area. I shouldn't use the word cube, it's not always a cube, but this area. <laughs> cool. So what this should do is create terrain, and that's good. So when we click our button, we want to call this function. And okay, so we're just about finished with this. So what this should do is when we click the button, it should create the terrain. Simple enough. However, what if uh, the user wants to undo the terrain it created? You know, that's a possibility. You know, uh, when you're building in Roblox, a lot of the times you do things you don't want to do, and you click undo or press Control Z, whatever, to undo what you've done. Um, by default, when you manipulate the game with plugins and scripts and stuff, that stuff does not get registered um, to be undone or whatever. Uh, so we have to do that ourselves. And for that, we can use the change history service. This is a service I feel like a lot of people just don't know about and don't use, even though it's really easy and awesome to use. <laughs> so like any service, you just do game, get service, and get this one. So to start off with, let's just do that. So at the top of my script, I'm just gonna say local change history service equals game, get service, change history service. Cool. So with the change history service, all we have to do is set a waypoint. Um, if we click show hidden members again, we can see these things. So the change history service has all of these things. And you can see again that there are plugin security levels. So our plugin can access all of these. Um, and all we want to do is set a waypoint. So that's what I'm going to do. You can see that it, you need a, a name for it. 
in my experience the name doesn't matter at all <laughs> so I think you can just name it whatever you want and I've done experimenting and you have to set the waypoints after the action so change history service set waypoints and just set whatever so I'm gonna set um, flat train that way if we create the train and we want to undo that action all we have to do is undo and it should get rid of this action all right so let's test it again right click on your train or your uh, plugin model click publish as plugin uh, wait forever for it to connect to Roblox and then override your existing plugin click OK tools manage plugins find your plugin and update it then restart studio and then go back to your plugin test place or whatever you want to do it all right so we see our bucket our button is still here um, so when I click flat terrain it should create a flat terrain object around here so I hope this works let's see <laughs> click all right it definitely froze up so I bet it's doing something ah oh, there you go so as we see it has created flat terrain so if we want to undo this we should be able to just click control Z or the undo button and it should disappear and then we can redo it for some reason <laughs> and of course it froze up on me again because it's a lot of terrain and there it is again undo and voila now you have it a terrain creating plugin so I'm actually going to keep this plugin because I've wanted this plugin for a while um, just to create flat train really quickly so there you have it um, if you wanted to improve this plugin um, a way to do this would be maybe to create an interface so when you click flat terrain maybe a, a GUI or a GUI pops up here and it asks for like um, the cell material maybe gives you a drop down of the existing materials and you can select that and then create it I think that would be really useful um, you could have a GUI setting that lets you set the size of the train, um, which will also be really useful, and maybe the position of it even. So there's a lot of different things you could improve on with this plugin that I recommend you do. Another thing you can do is even uh, uh, create an icon for this, and then just uh, get rid of this text here, and then add your icon URL here. Um, and yeah, just continue to improve it. That's the fun things with plugins. You start out simple and you keep on building with on you keep on building on them and whatnot. So that's all I have for this tutorial. I hope this helped. Um, yeah, see you guys later.